Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I'm talking about my camera gear and electronics for the Appalachian Trail, Peru, the Great Divide Trail, and the Colorado Trail. All right, so as I get closer and closer to starting my 2020 hiking season with the Appalachian Trail in March, I've been doing a bunch of different experimenting and playing around with different camera equipment and electronics to make sure that I can shoot some really good quality video on my adventures for 2020. Now, not only am I gonna be making videos on all of my hikes, but I'm actually going to Peru to shoot a short film. And I'll give you guys more information about that as I get closer, but because of all that, I wanna make sure that my camera game and my electronic game is on lock. Now, at this point, it should be no surprise that I'm a camera geek and I like bringing extra heavier, bigger camera equipment with me on my hikes. Now, a lot of through hikers will use just a cell phone to shoot their videos and photos while on trail, but for me, it's my luxury item. It's what allows me to stop and smell the roses more when I'm out on trail. It enhances my hike. So just keep in mind that most through hikers aren't gonna carry as much camera equipment and electronics as I do when I'm out on the trail, but I've been getting a ton of questions on what camera equipment I use to shoot my videos, what electronics I carry, what I use to charge those electronics. So here you go. All right, so over the years, I have bounced around on quite a few cameras because I am a camera geek and I'm constantly trying to upgrade to get the best quality that I can get. From using a GoPro on the AT and my section hikes of the CDT to using the Canon G7X Mark II on the PCT and a bunch of my other hikes to using the Canon M50 on the Arizona Trail and Scotland to the camera that I now use and would all be carrying for all of 2020 on my hikes, which is the Canon EOS R. Now to date, this is the biggest camera that I've ever carried on trail, but for me, that weight, that size is definitely worth it. The EOS R is a full frame mirrorless camera that for all you tech nerds shoots 8-bit 4K internal. So what that basically equals is really good quality and sort of cinematic looking footage. And the main lens that I'll be using with this camera is actually the one that I'm shooting with right now, so I can't really show it to you, which is the Canon EF 24 millimeter 2.8 IS lens. Now I've dabbled around with other lenses and I've carried multiple lenses on the trail, but at the end of the day, what I end up using about 98% of the time is either a 22 millimeter, which I had for my M50, or a 24 millimeter. So this year I'm just gonna be carrying the one lens to basically shoot it all. And then something that they did with the EOS R is they did change the mount. So the lens that I've been shooting with forever doesn't adapt to this, so I have to use a lens adapter. And the one that I use is the Canon EF to RF with a variable ND filter, which is awesome because basically what an ND filter does is it puts stops of light on or off of the lens. So it allows you to shoot out in the wide open with really bright sunny days and still retain all the quality in your image. The next part of my main setup is what I use to capture really good audio because that's super important to me out on trail. So I use the Rode Video Micro. Now, if you see a lot of people's setups that use bigger cameras and use an external mic, you'll see this on just about everyone's list. It's a super lightweight, it has this nice little shock mount, it has a big fluffy dead cat on it to help with wind noise. And this is the one that I've been using for the past two years, so it's gonna come with me in 2020 on the trail to get really good audio. All right, so the next part of my main camera setup for my EOS R is my tripod and the tripod of choice. It took me a couple years to really figure out what tripod I wanted to use. The perfect tripod is the UltraPod 2. This thing is awesome. I picked this up uh, right before I started the Arizona Trail last year and it's been great ever since. It's super lightweight, it's really sturdy and it has a pretty low footprint. So it just has the three legs, so it's not like a bendy Joby Gorilla Pod that I used to use that would always break. It's really nice and solid. And then on the top, I actually have an Arca Swiss clamp. Basically what this allows me to do is attach my camera 
with my clip that's on the bottom. And that brings me to my next part of my camera setup, which is my PD capture clip. Now that's the little thing that's usually up here on my shoulder strap that you guys see my camera attached to. You'll see that on a lot of people's setups. And basically what it is, is it's like a holster for your camera. So you can take the camera, slap it on there, lock it in place. And then when you're ready to take the shot, you can undo it, take your shot, or with this little clamp, I can put this on here, attach it, and then I can use it to either vlog, so kind of like a selfie stick, or set it up to get my shot on the trail. And that's pretty much it with my main camera setup. So basically it is just the EOS R, it is the mic, the 24 millimeter lens, the adapter with the drop-in ND, and my tripod. That's basically my main setup for all my vlogging, my photos, and the main camera that I'll be using to shoot a short film in Peru. Next up are the accessories and extras that I use with that main camera setup. So I do carry two extra Canon batteries. I carry this extra filter, and basically what this is, is it is a clear drop-in filter. So because that one is a variable ND and it's dark, if I wanna shoot in low light or at night, I gotta drop this thing in, which is clear, it still plugs that hole and allows me to get shots without darkening it up. I carry two 256 gigabyte SD cards, one in the camera, one as a backup, and I carry an SD to lightning card transferer, which allows me to put my SD card in here, plug it to my phone so I can upload footage to be edited later. All of those extra things, my batteries, my mic when I'm not using it, and even my tripod, I put everything in my Waymark Zip fanny pack. So basically that's all that my fanny pack is for are my extra camera items. So they're at the ready. If I need to grab my mic and throw it on to record some audio, if I need to slam another battery in there, I have all of that on the front ready to go. All right, so the next thing in my camera setup is actually a second camera, and it's something that I have not owned for years, and that is a GoPro Hero 8 Black. So why I picked this thing up is because I am gonna be hiking on a lot of wet trails. It's gonna be raining a lot. So in those situations, whenever it's pouring down rain, it's super wet, and I still wanna capture the moment, I picked this guy up. Now at this point, I would think that most people know that GoPros are waterproof, it shoots 4K video and has amazing image stabilization. Oh, and on the bottom, I do have a tripod mount. So if I want to mount this to my UltraPod, I still can. So that takes care of all of my camera gear. Now let's talk about some of the other electronics that I carry on trail. So for navigation, to be able to make calls, to be able to edit photos and video, and basically everything else that I do while I'm out on trail is my iPhone 11 Pro. Now, over the years, I have upgraded quite a bit from different phones. For me, it's not really because of the camera. It's not because of the new technology. It's basically because of storage. So this one has quite a bit of storage. So when I am transferring those files, those photos and videos, this will hold quite a bit of them. Now, aside from that, I use this as my main navigation tool. And I'm sure you guys know at this point, I like using the Gut Hook Guide app. Now for this year, lucky for me, the AT, the GDT, and the CT all have a gut hook app, which is great because that means that I can get good navigation when I'm out on trail, I can see where I'm going, I can see how far a campsite or a shelter or a town resupply, any of that without service on my phone. And then with the phone, because I am a big music geek and I listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm hiking, I have a set of Apple AirPods. So I've used regular headphones for years with the cords and they always break. I always get them wrapped up in something. So I finally switched to a Bluetooth wireless AirPod that has been great. They charge fast. They hold a charge pretty quick. Definitely heavier than regular headphones, but uh, worth it in my opinion. So the next electronic item that's going to be in my pack for 2020 is my headlamp of choice, the Yuko Air 150. It is USB rechargeable, 150 looms. It has an adjustable light dial. It has a red light. Um, I have altered it with this bungee shock cord and it weighs 0.9 ounces. 
This thing's awesome. It's yet to let me down on the trail, whether I'm night hiking, using it in camp, using it in early morning. Um, so it's coming with me on the trail for all of 2020 again. Hopefully it lasts this entire year and it doesn't finally take a crap on me, but uh, it's been pretty great so far. Now the last bit of electronics that I carry with me on the trail is what I keep in my ditty bag, and that's gonna be this bag of electronics. Basically all it is are my chargers and my cords. So first off is the charger that I've really come to like. I upgraded this past year, and it's what I'm gonna use all of 2020, I think, and that is the Anchor PowerCore 10,000 P. D. So this is basically an upgraded version of what I used to use all the time. It's 10,000 milliamps. It has the power delivery charging. So using my cell phone or using my camera, this will charge both of those items really quick. And basically the reason I picked this up and kind of ditched the old one was not just because of the quick charging, but because my EOS R does have USB-C charging so I don't have to carry a battery charger. Not to mention when I get to town, I can charge this much faster when I pair it with this little RAV Power 18 watt quick wall charger. So it's basically just a wall charger, has the little flip down prongs so you can plug it into the wall, but it has that power delivery socket which allows me to charge this much faster and charge my phone faster and charge my camera batteries faster when I get into a town. So it is quite a bit heavier and bigger than the ones that I typically carry, but because it can charge everything much faster, that just makes it more efficient for me when I get into a town or some sort of a village in Peru or somewhere where I need to get in and get out really quick. So. These two things are basically my main charging. And aside from that, the other two things that are in that bag are two braided cords. So these are both USB-C quick charge cables. Uh, this one is USB-C to lightning, so I can use it on my cell phone, and so I can use it to charge my earbuds. And this one is USB-C to USB-C, so I can use it to charge my battery, I can use it to charge my camera, and I have these two little adapters, so I can basically charge everything in my electronic setup. All right guys, so that's it. That's all of my camera equipment and all of my electronics that I'll be carrying for the Appalachian Trail, Peru, the Great Divide Trail, and the Colorado Trail. I'm pretty excited about this setup. Like I said, I've been messing around a lot and experimenting and making sure that I have the most efficient setup for what I do to make sure that I can bring you guys all along on my adventures. I love shooting video. I love taking photos when I'm out there so I can share it with other people to inspire them. So for me, having that extra heavy camera, having that extra GoPro, having these electronics are worth it to me. Some people it might not be worth it, and you might be one of those people that a cell phone is all that you need for shooting photos and shooting video, and that's fine, but for me, all this stuff definitely matters and definitely enhances my hike. So, have you picked up any new camera equipment or electronics for the trail in 2020? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching. There's a bunch of people that think that this is a green screen for some reason, so that would be snow. <laughs> and there's a stick. I just thought that was funny.